Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. That's what extensor tenosynovitis is in short, is that it's inflammation of the tendon sheath within that fibrous tube. So you have to do something to address it. You have to do something to get rid of it. And so through this, we're going to talk about, you know, some of the things you can do, some of the things to think about. Um, I mean, I have a whole course that you could look at, but you don't need that. This will help most people just looking at this, you know, hearing what I have to say here will help you really decide what you can do now and what you can do on your own without seeing anybody right now. And if you need more help, you can get the course, but I don't, you know, most people are not going to need that. So, um, now that you know what it is, let's talk about what you as a runner have to do. So the way I think about this, with every runner I see, I look at them and I say, okay, this is a runner who has pain, the runner wants to run, they want to get back to their event, they want to do the race this weekend or next month or in October or whatever it is, and they want to make sure that they can run. So best case scenario is you get it to go away very quickly, you have no problem, no long-term difficulties, and no chance of a recurrent injury because you didn't treat it adequately enough. So that's the best case scenario with this, is that you can get it to calm down and heal very quickly on your own, uh, and then get back to running right away. That's the best case scenario. Now the flip side of that is with every runner, you have to think about what is the worst case scenario. For example, the Achilles tendon, totally different tendon, totally different risk factors, and totally different long-term problems if you don't treat it appropriately. With an Achilles tendon injury, the worst case scenario is that you rupture it, you completely rip it and tear it, and don't notice right away that you actually tore it, and then when you have surgery, to put it back together, you have to shorten the Achilles tendon and then you're never the same. And then you wind up with a whole host of other injuries later because you have a super tight Achilles tendon that's stiff and non-compliant, non-pliable, um, more rigid, whatever you want to call it, because you had neglected it and had to have surgery. In that case, you're never going to run the same. So this is not that kind of thing. So with extensor tenosynovitis, you have to consider the best case scenario, you get it to calm really quickly. Best Worst case scenario, well, what happens? Well, the worst case scenario is it continues to hurt. So I've never heard of a runner rupturing the um, extensor tendons on the top of the foot because they continue to run. So let's say you did the, um, uh, you, you did a long run, your shoes were too loose or they were too tight or something. If they're too loose and you're sliding downhill, basically your, your shoe is getting banged by the top of your foot when you stop because the shoe stops and your foot slides and the top of your foot smacks into the tongue and then you can get extensor tenosynovitis because you've been basically banging the extensor tendons over and over and over and over. You can also get it because your laces are too tight. The laces are squeezing down on top of the extensor tendons and then as the toes try to move and the extensor tendons kind of move slightly through those shoelaces, they get basically compressed and abraded with a lot of friction that, that squeezes the extensor uh, tendon sheath and the synovial tissue inside it and it gets flared up. So you know, the, um, the best case scenario is it calms down quickly, but let's say you just did it. Let's say you did it training for a race and let's just say it's uh, uh, Thursday. Let's say it's Thursday and on Sunday you have a big race. You're doing Leadville or you're doing Western States 100 or you have the New York City Marathon or the Boston Marathon or something and you're really excited about that event and you do not want to miss that event. You've been training your tail off, you're really ready for it, you feel super fit, you just have an achy foot and you have pain on the top of your foot and you think you have extensor tenosynovitis. You think that that's your problem. You're pretty sure it's not a stress fracture, but you're sure, you're convinced for some reason, that you just have extensor tenosynovitis. Well, if you're sure it's not a stress fracture and you're sure it is extensor tenosynovitis, well then the worst case scenario is that it's gonna hurt. Well, big deal, right? You hurt every time you do mile repeats. You hurt every time you do hill repeats. You hurt every time you do a long run. So if it hurts so much you can't run, that's a problem. But the main point here is that you don't have the same risk that you would have with some other injuries, like if you had a, an Achilles tendon tear or a posterior tibial split or some other things that are high risk where you can make it so much worse you never run again. Not the case here. So. When you're thinking about whether or not you're going to do a race with this problem, you have to figure out what the best case scenario is, try to pursue that, but also be aware of what the worst case scenario is. Because if you have um, an event that you really want to do, knowing the worst case scenario tells you whether or not you could do the race. So if you're willing to do the race and suffer a little bit, you can probably do some things to calm the inflammation down, do some things to take the pressure off of it, and then do your race without any serious problems. So that's what you have to think about when you're considering the worst case scenario for any kind of injury if you want to run your race. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.